Hi, I'm Old Sneelock. Welcome to another episode of Old Sneelock's Workshop. It's finally stopped raining after two days, and I can get back to the project. I have a few things that I have to finish up before I can finish the job. These boards over here, I ran out of weather, so I stopped painting and started putting up roofing. Because I can do roofing if it rains occasionally, but I can't do it in downpour. Well, I don't want to do it in the downpour. But I can't paint in a downpour. I can't paint when it's sprinkling. I can't paint when the surface wet. I can't paint if it's too cold. If it gets down below 50 at night, it says the paint doesn't stick. I believe them, it's happened. So, I have a good warm couple of days here. Uh, it's September, so those are rare. I have to paint these boards. And I also have to put up one more piece to make the cross beam. Because I want to have right here a 2x4 going across 8 inches from the window. I want to give myself enough room to get up there and do some work on the window if I need to. Take the glass out, get a paintbrush in there and paint if I need to. And not have to do that funky flashing over the top of the window with a piece of masonite and aluminum foil and God it was a mess. I don't know how in the world they ever thought that was going to work. But it did work after a fashion for at least 20 years I think it's more likely like uh, 40 years because this house was built in 1964 and the stuff on this thing this is from the 70s so it's been a long time up there anyways I don't build that way I want to make something that's gonna last and I don't have to ever fiddle with it and it solves a couple of problems that I had with never work on the window uh, fortunately the glass didn't break and I didn't have anything major leaking in there so I didn't have to do a whole lot of work to the frame otherwise I would have had to tear all this stuff off years ago but with all that preliminary stuff going I'm gonna do the painting uh, I'll do a, a brief snippet just to show what I'm doing but before I do that I have to put up the 2x4 and I have to put up the cross brace hopefully that's gonna be a short little project what I say about everything isn't it but I'll leave the camera running and I'll clip out pieces and let you show kind of what I'm up to this is the bracket that they use to fasten to the fascia board not thrilled with it but it works it's not a great one it's marginally acceptable you don't walk on the roof uh, it only has to carry snow load the span is only six feet uh, it's attached to the roof on that side of the house and a beam on this side of the house so a six foot long two by four can support a tremendous amount of weight this attachment point is not great but it'll work so that's what I'm gonna do I don't want to have to go through and tear out all the two by four framing and do the whole thing it's held up for a long long time I think I'm going to stay with it. But first I have to straighten this out a bit. The blacksmith shop is such a mess. I have to walk over, under, around, and through everything to do anything. And I have stacks of stuff stacked up all over the place. Including things like extra horseshoes. Can't have too much luck, right? Get the fire brick off the top of the anvil. Now I can straighten out this bracket. Kind of a silly situation, but it's way All done. Only takes a minute. Takes longer to get through making a space to do the work than it does to actually do the work. Now 
this is where the roof line meets the house and I had to put a piece of flashing in here and close that up because the water running down that spot there had actually softened it to the point where bugs had eaten the wall. Bugs like having a damp area, it makes things easier to eat and it also keeps them uh, happy as a bug. Now I expect to come over about 8 inches And I think that should be enough. I don't want to go too far because I need, I need to have the spot here where the water runs down the roof. I want to redirect that water over onto this section of the roof so that it goes down to the gutter. If I leave that open, I'll just have water pouring down here. Now, admittedly, that's only going to happen if there's a lot of rain because there's an overhang on the roof here that's about 8 inches wide. So the one will help protect the other. But if I get a good strong east wind and a rainstorm, I don't want to have water running down here and splashing on the floor and washing out the sand and the stones. So I'm going to redirect the water over onto this part of the roof. And to make that work a little better, I'm going to try and keep this offset about 8 inches. Now I can go over from the house or over from this 2x4. Over from this 2x4 is going to give me a much better consistency because this house may not exactly match this part of the building. Uh, the guy putting it up was inventive and creative and he put up a lot of interesting things in the house. Not square. So I'm going to square off of this 2x4 this space is 22 and 3 quarters. If I subtract 8 inches from that, I come up with 14 and 3 quarters. Always check your math. 14 and 3 quarters. Yes, 14 and 3 quarters. So I want to have the offset 14 and 3 quarters from the 2 by 4. So that right there is the outside edge of my 2x4. Now all the rest of these little brackets are held up with small nails. By small, I mean inch and a half uh, box nails. Not sure exactly how many pennies that is. 20. If I was really interested, I'd look it up, but I'm not. Bottom of the bracket, half inch up. Quick check for plumb doesn't need to be perfect because I'm working against an imperfect situation. But I'm trying to get it as close as I can. There. Now I have the racket on this side. One side of the board is painted. It was painted a long time ago when I first started working on this porch. I said the first thing I got to do is clean it up a bit. We had carpenter bees attacking the porch. In the books and online, it said that if you paint, carpenter bees don't eat through paint. Well, that's bullshit. They do. They must have a, 
different rule book where it says on Tuesday if it's the sun's in the first quadrant of the sky and the moon's gonna be up in a couple of hours you can eat through the paint no that's not really it just people say things on the internet that don't mean squat painting doesn't stop carpenter bees it slows them down but they will eat through caulk they will eat through paint they will eat poison and die they really don't care they're just in the business of drilling a hole because they want to make babies in a, inside of a nice dark safe space wood is their place of choice and they are prolific tunnelers one of the little buggers made a six inch tunnel down through one of the two by fours one of the little buggers made a six inch tunnel down through one of the spacers that supports the fiberglass on top of the two by fours that's why we went with plastic this time they didn't bother the two by fours as much they made about six holes in the two by fours but man they tunneled through that uh, corrugated spacer like it was butter so anyways I have one side painted I'm gonna put that towards the house because it's a little easier to p cover paint with paint than it is to put up new paint so I'm gonna leave this side out because I gotta put two coats on it Try to make the job easier. Flip it into that corner just so I've got a support for it. I'll get up there and tap it down in in a second. But I want to go up here and put the screws in on this end, so I have to mark it first. Now, because this side doesn't have a bracket, I don't have to worry about positioning the bracket. I just have to make the top of the 2x4 flush with the top of the beam. There. And that problem's taken care of. Now I'm going to toenail some three inch screws in I guess it's called toe screws Still flush. Always have an extra screw in your pouch. Okay, that appears to be solid. Uh, mark the cross piece.
Need to cut it that length. And mark it as a cross piece. That way I've got an idea which one I've got. in the bracket. Wedge it in tightly. Anchor down the other end. Should be good to go. Good and solid. This is the back piece that the wavy fiberglass support rail goes on. It has to fit in between here and provide a flat surface to anchor the house end of the fiberglass to. All it supports is fiberglass, it doesn't support any structure, but it still needs to be secure. That's in solid. This one's going to be a little harder to do. They've got these toenailed in. And that's a tried and true method. It, it works. Not my favorite, but it does work. I need to pull my ladder back a little bit. Give myself room to get up into the hole. I'm going to pre-drill for the first couple of screws. I'm going to make them go in, but... It just makes it easier to line everything all up. Once I have the first two in, the rest of them can be just driven. There, nice and solid. One more on the back side. And once again, nobody should be walking on this fiberglass. The two by fours won't hold them and definitely the fiberglass won't either. Good and solid. Okay, one more board to put up over there, then it's painting time. Now I have to switch out of my carpenter's gear and into my painting gear. Oh, wait a minute. All I have to do is take off my tool pouches and my holster and my hammer. And you thought these old raggedy pants were just a fashion statement. When this painting job is done, they go in the garbage. If you have any suggestions for a new video, questions about today's video, or any of the other videos on the channel, just drop a note in the comments. You know I read them all. Thanks for watching.